Well, good morning, everyone. I'm so glad that you're with us today, and we are going to be continuing our series where we're talking about navigating our new world. And there's so many crazy things that are going on around us. We're still dealing with the pandemic, especially here in California, and just so many other things that have come against us and brought a place of instability in the hearts of an awful lot of people. But we know that the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit is there to help us navigate into this next season and be victorious. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I really want to challenge you to join us and stay with us. And I just believe the Holy Spirit wants to do something brand new in your life today. All right. So we're going to open in prayer. Then we're going to go to a time of worship. But I just encourage you, put it on the biggest screen in the house. Invite everybody to get out of bed and join you. And let's do church. Right. Let's make your home a sanctuary today. Let's open in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we invite you to come right into our homes today. Lord, you know the challenges that we're facing. You know, the things that are stirring all around us. And Lord, I just pray that today you would bring hope and peace and faith to each person that's joining us. And that, Father, we would leave this time different because we've encountered your presence. So we give you this time. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our worship team is going to come, and I just invite you to, to enter in and join in in worship. The words will be here on the screen, so don't just sit and watch, but enter in. Just make your home a place of worship today. Come on, let's worship the Lord together.
just so important for you to take time out of all of the stuff that is all around you and worship the Lord. There's just something about it. I know that when I'm dealing with stressful situations or um, just life gets heavy, if I take time to worship the Lord, it just sets a precedent that's so different. It brings an atmosphere into my life and situation that allows me to move forward in a place of faith rather than fear, stress, or doubt. So I just want to encourage you to make sure that you create a space for yourself to where you can really worship and pray, spend time with the Lord. That's what this is really all about. We want to go to prayer. We want to pray for you. You know, different people have sent us prayer requests, things that they're walking through, certainly challenges with our health and other situations that have come up, financial situations, situations in relationships with marriages, you know. God cares about everything that you're walking through in your life. And there's answers for those things in God's word. But then there's also the anointing that comes through prayer to see things broken off of you. We've just finished a time of 21 days of fasting and prayer. And I'm just believing that God wants to supernaturally move in your situation. So let's pray together today. All right. Father, we come before you and you know the challenges that each person that's watching is walking through. You know, the things they're facing in their health. Lord, I'm just reminded that your word said that you are Jehovah Rapha, our healer, and that Jesus took stripes on his back for our healing. So, Lord, I just pray right now for those that are sick in their body, that you would minister life to them. Heal them, Lord, whether it's a COVID issue or something else that's coming against their physical body, that right now your power would flow right to their life. Father, I pray for those that are struggling financially, that, Lord, you would meet their needs according to your riches and glory, not according to what we can maneuver or, or finagle, but, Lord, that your spirit would just come. Be Jehovah Jireh to them today, their provider. And, Lord, those that are just dealing with the emotions, the heaviness of, of the culture and the things that we're facing, that, Father, right now, you would just come into that situation, that you would lift that heavy burden Lord, that we would take your yoke upon us because it's light. And I pray that, Lord, you would just encourage each person today. I'm so grateful that we don't have to walk through this season alone. But, Lord, we can walk with you. 
And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want to encourage you. If you need prayer, please don't hesitate to give us a call, put a note there on Facebook, whatever, and we'll get our intercessors praying for you. You don't have to walk through this stuff alone, right? There's so many things that are going on around us. We need hope and we need one another. And God didn't create you to live in isolation. You were created for community. And that's what the body of Christ is supposed to be, a place of community. So I'm just... uh, really wanting to encourage you. Don't, don't try to do it alone. If you need help, reach out. We'll, we'll pray with you and stand with you as we navigate through this time, all right? All right, a couple of quick announcements. We'll get into the Word this morning. You know, uh, we're trying to maintain different ministries as we're walking through this season. So men, 6 o'clock Tuesday mornings, we meet. You can join us in person or via Zoom. If you'd like to join us, even if you're in other parts of the country, you can. Uh, call the church. We'll let you know what you need to do. Love to have you this Tuesday morning. Uh, Ladies Bible Studies continuing on Tuesday night via Zoom. And they're doing a Priscilla Schreier video that's powerful on on the life of Elijah. So if you'd like to join, uh, feel free. It's going to be a powerful thing. Youth, everything else is going on. Young adults, Tuesday nights. So if there's anything we can help you with, please let us know. And I just want to say again, thank you so much for your faithfulness to support financially the ministry here. Our people, through your tithes and offerings, because of your faithfulness, we've been able to help so many people in our community. And I just want to say thank you for that as we continue to walk through this time. It's unprecedented and the needs are, are huge. And so uh, we still have a lot of people in need that we're helping each month. And so if you can help us out with that, that'd be a wonderful thing. You do what the Lord lays on your heart. You can give um, through our website and go there to summitchristianchurch.org and it'll show you what to do through PayPal or text to give or you can mail a check to the church, whatever works. I just want to say thank you for your support and it's allowing us to to have ministry continue to go forward but also to help other people that are in need. So thanks again for your faithfulness. Um, I just so appreciate it. All right. Okay, so we're going to get in the word this morning and um, I'm excited about this message and I, I really hope that you'll stay with us because it's such a powerful portion of scripture that helps us navigate this new season that we're walking in. So I started this series last week and I've titled it Navigating This New World because there's so much that's different right now than what it was. The pandemic has changed so many things. It's changed how we shop. It's changed how we view uh, everything online, right? It's changed the way we do church and worship. And some of these changes are really difficult depending on how well you navigate change or how well you do tech. But the reality is, is that it's a new situation and it's different to us and it's surprising to us and it's frustrating to us. But the reality is, is God is not surprised, frustrated, or worried, right? His body is going to move forward and he has a plan and a purpose. And for us to navigate through this season, we have to get to a place to where we come into contact and sync ourselves with him and with his spirit so that he can lead us and guide us into this new season. And I just want to challenge you. So we we started last week talking about the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That the Lord didn't leave us abandoned as orphans after his death, burial, and resurrection. But he told his disciples, he says, listen, it's actually going to be better for you when I leave because then I can send the promise, the Holy Spirit, the comforter, that he'll come alongside. He'll teach you. He'll empower you. He'll walk with you and, and, and take you through every situation. You never have to be alone. And there's so many times, and especially in this season where we felt so alone, we felt so isolated, we felt like, uh, man, I don't know how to navigate this or what tomorrow is going to hold. The reality is, is that the Holy Spirit will walk with us through each of these things. So last week we talked about how that it's so important for us to get to the place to where we recognize the Holy Spirit for who he is, that he's not an it It's not just some blob or the Holy Ghost and and we have these weird thoughts that come to our head. But he is a person who wants to walk with us. He's part of the Godhead. He is God. And that we can have daily communion with him. That he wants to do life with us. That he wants to be involved in every aspect of our life. And here's the thing. That sounds wonderful except for when you don't want it to be. What do I mean by that? There's times where we're going to make decisions and we're going to do things that we think, well, it'd be better for him to wait in the truck and I'm going to go in here and then I'll talk to you when I get out. But it doesn't work that way. He goes with us everywhere. 
And so today I want to talk to you a little bit about the term or the phrase that we use called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So last week we talked about how that the Holy Spirit was active in our lives as we've given our life to Christ. It starts with that relationship with Jesus where we come before him. We say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your precious blood. I give my life to you. It's what we call being saved, that salvation new birth where we've given our life to Christ. And because of what Jesus did, not because we've been good enough or we've earned it, but because we have accepted this gift that Jesus gave of his own life for us, that his precious blood was shed to wash away our sin so that you and I can have relationship with our heavenly father. Outside of that sacrifice that Jesus made, there's no way we can get there. We can't be good enough. You can't give enough money. You can't do enough good deeds. It's not about you following the the list of rules, but it's accepting this gift that Jesus purchased with his life. That's the beginning of our relationship. But then when he left, he said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the comforter. And he says, John baptized with water, but he says, I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And here's the thing that I want to challenge you with. The body of Christ, there's been a lot of division over this concept of what it means to be baptized or filled or indwelled by the Holy Spirit. And so there's been these different camps, right? And so the gifts of the Spirit have become something that some people in the body of Christ feel like, well, those things were necessary to get the church started and for us to get the Word of God. But now that we have the Word of God, then we don't really need those gifts. They've passed away and we move forward and we're okay. Well, From our tradition, we believe that the work and the power of the Holy Spirit is still effective and effectual for us to live this life of Christianity day to day. That we have the access to the gifts and the power of the Holy Spirit, and it comes through this indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our life. So we're going to talk about that, and let me just say this to you. If you come from a different tradition... I just encourage you to stick with me, all right? Because I'm not one of those people that says this is the only way that you got to see this because the reality is, is there's a lot of people who don't see the baptism of the Holy Spirit manifest the same way that I do who are filled with the Spirit. It's obvious because the power of the Spirit is working through their life. So I want you to hang with me this morning, but let's jump into the word and let's start by praying together. I just think it's important that we open our hearts so that the Holy Spirit can speak to us, right? Not me, not just some guy trying to express some theology to you, but I want you to be introduced to the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I think it's so necessary for where we're going in this next season. So let's pray together. Father, I just pray that your precious Holy Spirit would come right now into every life and every situation. You know the challenges that we're facing, and Lord, we don't want to do this alone. In fact, we can't do this alone. So we desperately need the power and the unction of the Holy Spirit to come into our life and our situation. So Holy Spirit, we just open ourselves to you. You are welcome in our lives right now. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we work through this message today, I'm going to give you a bunch of scripture just because I think scripture paints the picture. And then we'll talk about how these things connect as we move forward. I'm going to start with Matthew chapter three, verses 11 and 12, where John the Baptist is there about to baptize Jesus. And he says this, reading from the New King James, he said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So John, who was the forerunner of Christ's coming, he says that when Jesus comes, he is going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He says, I'm baptizing you with water to repentance, and he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And I love this portion of scripture in John chapter 7. So Jesus in, in the book of John is with his disciples And they're at the place where they're celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, the Feast of Tabernacles was one of the feasts that the Jewish people still to this day will celebrate. And one of the things that it did, it talked about or celebrated the fact that God's made provision for them in their journey through the wilderness from Egypt to the promised land. All right. And on the last day of this feast, one of the things they would do, they would take these huge cisterns or like 
tanks full of water and they would dump them out and they would run down the steps of the temple and it was representing how God would allow water to gush out in the wilderness to provide for his people, all right? So that's just kind of this cool thing. And here we are in John chapter seven, verse 37. Again, reading from the New King James, it says, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the spirit, whom, uh, who those believing in him would receive for the Holy Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. So Jesus at the Feast of Tabernacles stands up and he declares this and he says, hey, he says, if anyone will come after me, I will give them rivers of living water that will flow from your heart. And he was talking about what the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. When Jesus left, he said, it's going to be better that I leave because I'm going to send the power of the Holy Spirit. He's going to come and indwell you and he's going to give you everything necessary to walk the victorious Christian life with power. Right, So here, before he's even close to his death, burial, and resurrection, at the Feast of Tabernacles, he was talking about the representation of this flowing that the Holy Spirit will do. It'll flow out from us. When the Holy Spirit is indwelling us, when we have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, there is access to this flow of his presence that flows from us to the people in the world around us. We become Christ to the world. It's a powerful picture. The other one that I thought was kind of cool in John chapter four, verses 13 and 14, it's the story of the woman at the well. If you remember, Jesus comes, there was a woman that was at the well because her lifestyle was a mess and she couldn't come when everybody else came. So she was there in the heat of the day. Jesus tells her everything that's going on in her life. Let's pick it up in John 4, 13 and 14. It says, Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks this water will be thirsty again. So he said, can you give me a drink from the well? And the lady says, okay. And then he says, the water that you're giving me, I'm going to be thirsty again. Verse 14, he says, but whoever drinks the water that I'll give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. You see, this is the thing you got to understand. When we're walking through difficult season, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, when you've been filled with the Spirit, comes and there's this everlasting flow that comes from the throne room of God to edify, strengthen, empower you, flow to you and through you to the people around you. When we're walking in concert with the life of the Spirit inside of us, this flow happens. It's a beautiful picture of what the Holy Spirit wants to do. So let me take you now to the book of Acts, right? So this is after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. The disciples are still trying to figure out what's going on. Verse 3, I read this last week. It said, after his suffering, he showed himself to these men and uh, gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. And on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. He said, don't leave Jerusalem. But wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the dates that the father has set by his own authority. Listen to this in verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. So last week we talked about how the the disciples were at this place. It was a new beginning. Talk about how we're going to navigate this new world. This world, everything has changed for them because Jesus, death, burial and resurrection. And so they're going, how are we going to navigate through? Well, Jesus tells them that you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and he's going to give you power so that you can be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. In other words, I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and he's going to give you everything you need to fulfill the plan and the purpose of God here on planet earth until my second coming. Are you with me? And so we have to understand that as we're walking through a new season, it might be a difficult time, but his kingdom is unfolding. You know, we're working through the one-year Bible, and this last week we were talking through the time where 
where Joseph had gone to Egypt and he brought his whole family down there. And they came with great celebration because Joseph had saved all of Egypt because of the interpretation of the dream that God had done through him. And so while the rest of the world is in famine, Egypt had stored up plenty of food to survive seven years of famine. His family came and everything was great. And I remember as I was reading that thinking, you know, why would the Lord bring them to Egypt knowing that in a while they're going to be enslaved and they're going to live their life in bondage? Well, the reality is, is that God was putting them in an incubator to where they could grow into this great nation. They didn't have to fight the other peoples around them. They had the world's superpower protecting them. And even though they were living in bondage, God was working his plan. They went from about 70 people to over a million people during that 400 years. And during that time, it would have been difficult. If you lived at year 300 into it, you wouldn't have thought much of God's plan because you were living under the yoke of slavery and bondage. But God was working things out. And here's the thing that you've got to understand, that God's kingdom is coming. He is working it out right now, and we get to be a part of it. Now, we may not see the full execution of what that plan's going to look like, but we have a role to play, and the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit is walking with you to fulfill that purpose. So even when we're walking through times like this with a pandemic, with just political upheaval and things going on in the world that are so frightening if you allow them to overwhelm you, we have to step back and say, listen, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit lives and dwells in me. I don't have to live in fear. I have to stay in faith, walking in concert with the Holy Spirit, and I will accomplish everything that God's called me to. Are you with me? That's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is really all about. So in Acts chapter 2, where we get Pentecost, right, we have this amazing thing that takes place. And it says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together in one place in one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a violent rushing wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And it sat upon each one of them. So like flames came and sat on top of their heads, right? Pretty powerful situation. And it was sitting on them. Verse 3. And there appeared to them divided tongues, sorry, verse four. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and they were confused because everyone heard them speaking in their own language. And they were all amazed and they marveled, saying to one another, look, are not these all men speaking that from, Gal are they Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of them speaking in our own language, which we were born? And then he lists all the different countries that were there. So what's going on? You have this outpouring of the Holy Spirit when they're celebrating Pentecost. This outpouring comes. The Holy Spirit shows up because they were waiting for him in the upper room. They were all there with an intensity waiting for God to bring this promised gift. And as they're there, the Holy Spirit comes in with the sound of a violent rushing wind. Tongues of fire come and sit on their heads. They're baptized or filled with the Holy Spirit, and they begin to speak in other tongues. Now, let me just stop right here because this is where the wheels fall off for some people. Because when you start talking about speaking in other tongues, people get all weird. You want to freak people out, just open the door and say, speak in tongues, and they might freak out depending on their theological background. Well, the reality is, is that when people heard this sound, they came and they heard them speaking in their own language. Pastor Jack Hayford, who's one of my heroes in the faith, I think he wrote a book on this even, and he talks about the beauty of spiritual language. You see, over the course of time, tongues has deteriorated into this uh, kind of a gimmicky picture for a lot of people. And they think of people who are freaking out, foaming at the mouth, spinning around, going crazy. And I just want to tell you something, that the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit doesn't come to make you weird. Are you hearing me? Because some people have held this whole experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit at arm's length because they're afraid they're going to have to act like somebody that they've seen that was weird. 
And the reality is, is that there's nothing weird about what's happening. This was the promise of God that is given to all believers. And if we open our heart to the Holy Spirit, then he wants to come and allow Jesus to baptize us with the Holy Spirit to give us that power so that we can walk in victory. He doesn't come just so you can speak in tongues, right? There's a theology that some of us grew up in that are Pentecostal, who we said that the initial evidence, the way you know that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit is you have to speak in tongues. And that was kind of the way I was raised, but it wasn't like crammed down our throat. The way that I've come to experience it now is that it's a consequence of me being totally surrendered to the Holy Spirit. People say, well, can I be filled or baptized in the Spirit and not speak in tongues? Yeah, I believe you can. I don't know why you'd want to, because if it's a gift from God, you have to understand that it's not given to you to make you into a weirdo. It's given to you for you to step into a new revelation of prayer because tongues brings us to a deeper walk and experience in prayer and worship. So how do I know that? Well, because when they heard the commotion, it wasn't because they were freaking out. It's just they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the joy of the Lord that the Holy Spirit brings. And they were speaking in tongues and they heard them speaking in their own language, crying out in their own words. And it says, we hear them speaking in our own tongues. And what were they speaking? The wonderful works of God. When we begin to pray in tongues, what happens is it's a spiritual language that comes not from here, but it comes from here. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit comes and he gives you this heavenly language that you don't understand in your own vernacular, but the Spirit of God is interceding for you. It's a powerful thing that begins to flow through the hearts of those that have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Some people, though, hold it at bay because they were taught that it's not of God, it's not for today, all of these different things. And so it's become, for some people, this, this contentious thing. And I, I want to take that away. I want us to get to a place to say, man, if the Holy Spirit wants to come, and if he wants to indwell me and give me power, and if the gifts of the Spirit are for today, then I want everything that the Holy Spirit has because I need it to walk in this new experience that we're walking into. And that's what I want to challenge you with today. We talked about how that the Holy Spirit wants to be involved in your daily life, walking with you, talking with you, experiencing life with you. The baptism of the Holy Spirit brings us to a place to where there's this supernatural connection that we have with the Spirit of God that walks with us and talks with us. I love it where Paul says, even when I don't know what to pray, that the Spirit will intercede for me with words that I can't even express. I know that there's been times in my life where I've been frustrated or stressed or discouraged. I feel like God just is a million miles away. But when I begin to pray and ask the Lord to come and the Holy Spirit shows up and I begin to pray in my heavenly language, this, this beautiful language that the Lord gives and flows through me, I can sense the presence of the Holy Spirit interceding through me and for me. It's a wonderful thing. It's not weird. It's not goofy. It's not something where he's going to throw you on the floor and make you writhe and foam at the mouth like some people think. But it's a spiritual gift when the presence of the Holy Spirit indwells me that flows from this place from the inside out. Rivers of living water begin to flow from you. And I want to challenge you today. Listen, the Holy Spirit wants to walk with you. He wants to give you insight and direction in how to deal with the circumstances of life. This new world that we're stepping into. I don't know about you, but I need some direction, supernatural direction, so that I don't allow fear to get into my heart and get all stressed and worried. But I can go into the presence of the Lord and allow the Spirit of God to begin to intercede for me and through me and God's power shows up in those moments. And I want you to understand this, that being a follower of Christ, being a Christian, it's not a church you join. It's not, it's not a, a list of rules that, that you ascribe to, but it's a relationship with your creator. And when he wants to come and give you the power of the Holy Spirit so that you can walk this thing out in victory, why on earth wouldn't we want it? Because you heard somebody say that it's weird? Because you saw somebody that was an emotional person that just kind of gets funky when they talk about the presence and power of the Holy Spirit? So let me tell you what happened. It says that they began to, to hear this people praising God and 
talking about the wonderful works of God. Verse 12, it says, for they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? It wasn't that they showed up and said, these people are freaky. It's like, what in the world is going on? They came out and they heard him speaking in their own tongue. They saw the joy of the Lord that was on them. They were declaring the goodness and the works of God. And they said, what is going on? But look at this, verse 13. Others mocked saying, they're full of new wine. In other words, they're drunk. I'm going to tell you something, that there are always people, when you talk about the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, that are always going to be mockers. They're going to sit back either because they don't fully understand it, they've never been taught, or they've been taught in such a way to where they believe that it's not for today or it's not of God. And they'll sit back and they'll make fun of. Listen, even if you don't believe this, don't sit in the seat of the mocker. Read Psalm chapter one. It'll talk about that. But be people that are open to whatever God has so that we can fulfill the purposes of God in our life. There's always going to be people that are going to sit back and say, that's weird. It's goofy. It's not for today. You don't want that. Stay away from it. I was listening to a guy preach. And when he first started in ministry, he says, anybody that talks about the presence or the power of the Holy Spirit, just stay away from those people. Why would you do that? Anyway, he goes on from there and says this, they were, they're drunk. So Peter stands up. Remember, Peter was the guy that denied Christ three times. He quit being a disciple to go back to being a fisherman because he thought he was a failure. Jesus had to come and find him on the boat, reestablish his call on his life. And what happened? But Peter, standing up with the 11, raised his voice and he said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And then he quotes what Joel said, that in the last days, God would pour out his spirit upon all flesh, that he was going to come. People were going to prophesy and function in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. You see, Peter went from somebody who was a failure to where now emboldened and powered by the Holy Spirit, he stands up and he declares the truth and God shows up in a powerful way. So as Peter is quoting through the prophet Joel in, in chapter two, verses 32 and 33, it says, then Jesus is raised up with us and we are all witnesses. So he's talking about how that Jesus has been raised from the dead and we've seen him. Verse 33 says, therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out that which you now see and hear. So Peter's saying what you're seeing and what you're hearing you're seeing the joy of the Lord on these people. You're hearing tongues. You said, what you're seeing, that's the Holy Spirit that Jesus is baptizing us with, that he prophesied about. He goes on later in verses uh, 38 and 39. It says, then Peter said to them, and this is after, after Peter's message, they, they cried out and they said, what should we do? What should we do with this message? Because they were cut to the heart, it said. And how did Peter respond? He said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is to you and to your children and all who are far far off as many as the Lord God will call. So what is he saying? He's saying this baptism of the Holy Spirit, this infilling of power, it's for everyone that will hear and come. That's the power of God. Listen, it's for you today. This wasn't something that just happened at Pentecost to get the ball started, but this gift is available for you and for me and for everybody who is trusted on the name of Jesus Christ to navigate through this new season. You want to navigate through this season and be victorious, then you need to have the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. Some of you may be sitting there saying, well, pastor, I thought when I got saved or I gave my life to Christ that I received the Holy Spirit. There's certainly a portion of the Holy Spirit that you have, and you can live your whole Christian life with just that portion. But there is another outpouring that's deeper, that goes wider. And it starts with a desire in your heart to have everything that God has for you. It can be different for different people. And if you might've come from a different theological background, listen, if you'll just open your heart to the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, you'll invite him in, ask Jesus to baptize you afresh and new with the Holy Spirit. He'll come right into your situation and he'll baptize you right now. 
and give you the power to succeed with your destiny and purpose. He'll give you what you need to navigate this new season. He'll give you what you need to see victory over the works of the enemy. He'll let those rivers of living water begin to flow out of you and splash on everybody around you. Let me give you a couple more scriptures. I'm running out of time. I love this in Acts chapter 19 where Paul had come to Ephesus and it says it happened that while Apollos was in Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper region, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. So Paul gets to Ephesus and he finds some people who are trusting in Jesus, right? Finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So he asked them this question, did you receive it? They were already believers, but he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? In other words, there's more, right? So then what happens? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what baptism were you baptized? Kind of trying to figure out where they were and what they understood. So they said into John's baptism. Then Paul said to them, indeed, John baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to people that they should believe on him who would come after him. Talking about Jesus. That is on Christ Jesus. Verse five, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they began to speak with tongues and prophesy. So here's a group of believers that have believed in Christ through John's teaching. They've come to this place, but they didn't understand that the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit was available for them right then and there. You see, the power of God is available for you. And there's an awful lot of us who have given our life to Christ because we heard the good news. We knew that we were dead in our own trespasses and sins, Scripture says. But we've come to the place where we believe that the blood of Jesus washed those sins away. You're a part of the family of God. My question to you is this. Have you connected with the Holy Spirit? Have you been baptized with the Holy Spirit? Now, don't let yourself get all freaked out by that question. Just simply answer it. Is the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit alive and active in you? Do you know that he's there? Is he flowing through you? Have you tapped into to who he is and what he's called you to? Are you walking in victory or are you walking in defeat? You see, when the power of the Holy Spirit comes, he will strengthen you. He will teach you. He will lead you and guide you. He'll open before you the gifts that he'll bring that we'll probably talk about next week. But I want to challenge you right now that wherever you are, that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is available to you. Maybe you were like me, a church kid, and you went to summer camp years ago, and you were baptized with the Holy Spirit, and you maybe spoke in tongues. Maybe it's been years since you've allowed that to flow through you. And you've just kind of gone through a season to where, yeah, you believe in God, but the joy of the Lord is no longer your strength. You've been frustrated and worried by the things that are going on in the world around you. And I want to challenge you today that it's time to let the Holy Spirit come and wash over you, to indwell you, empower you, that rivers of living water can begin to flow out of you. You say, well, do I have to speak in tongues? Listen, what I want you to encourage you to do, I'm going to pray for you in just a minute, is that you just open your heart to the Holy Spirit. And you say, Holy Spirit, I want to be baptized. Jesus, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. You open your heart to whatever he wants to do in you. And you let him come. Let him be the determining force. Many times when we do this and we pray, and if you were here, I'd call you down to the front and we would lay hands on you like Paul did with the people in Ephesus. And we believe that there's something that happens when we lay hands, but I'm going to pray for you right now. And I know that the Holy Spirit can come right into your situation. And as you open your heart to him, he'll come and fill you and baptize you. And what'll happen is you'll feel that power and the presence of the spirit come upon you. Some of you may begin to pray in other tongues. It'll flow from here, not here. You just let it flow. It's a language that you don't understand. In your mind, you'll say, well, that's weird. I don't want to do that. Don't be like the mockers. Just let the spirit of God do in you what he wants to do, right? But let's let the power of God begin to well up inside of us because it's not just about you speaking in tongues. It's about you being empowered to do what God's word has called you to do. I'm going to pray for you right now. Wherever you are, I just want to challenge you. Just get yourself in a posture to receive.
All right. If you're at home sitting on the couch, wherever it is, if you're driving, pull over, whatever it takes, get to the place to where you can receive. Because I want to pray for you right now. And you just invite the Holy Spirit in. Father, I just come before you. I'm so grateful that you sent your son, that Jesus was obedient to the call and the plan of salvation, that he went to the cross and he died and he shed his blood so that we could be accepted into your family. We've been washed in the blood and we are the righteousness of Christ today because of what Jesus did. But Lord, I know that there's so much more that many of us need to experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, some of us have been taught things or we've seen weird things. There's been different things so that we've held the Holy Spirit at arm's length. But Lord, I pray that right now we would open our hearts to the power and the presence of the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in our lives. Right now, Holy Spirit, I just pray that you would go into hearts and lives where people are as they're listening right now that, Lord, you would baptize them. Jesus, baptize your people with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Lord, that, that he would come with that anointing and that power and the gifts. That, Lord, even the spiritual language would begin to flow in the hearts and lives of your people. That you would begin to intercede in and through us. And that, Father, we would step into a deeper walk and an understanding of who we are in Christ Jesus, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Let rivers of living water flow right now into every situation that your people are walking in. That Lord, right now we receive from you. Holy Spirit, fill me now. I receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Boy, if you prayed that prayer and you opened your heart, then I believe the Holy Spirit is right there coming into your situation. That Jesus is baptizing you right now. He loves you. This isn't weird. This is the most practical thing in the hearts and lives of believers that you can ever experience. Our worship team is going to come back and we're going to worship the Lord. And you just stay right there and allow the presence of the Holy Spirit to come as we worship the Lord. If you receive that prayer language, then you just let it flow. It'll grow. The vocabulary will grow. You'll learn to speak and pray and intercede through it. You can even sing in the Spirit. It becomes this beautiful thing between you and the Lord. Let it just begin to move in your life today. Amen. Come on, let's worship the Lord together.